This uh, quick presentation to open the, uh, the conference is about uh, the state of W2, but not only what we are, but where we are. We are in a market that has been launched about 30 years ago in September 83, when Richard Stolmold uh, sent a mail saying he was going to uh, develop a GNU, a Unix, a free Unix operating system. And then he went on to define the four freedoms that uh, define uh, what we do today. The first freedom is the freedom to use the software for whatever you want to do, which is something you cannot do with proprietary software. The second freedom is the freedom to study the software, to look at it and to adapt it to your needs, which is something you cannot do with proprietary software. The third freedom is the freedom to redistribute copies of the software you've been using against something you cannot do with proprietary software. And the last freedom is the freedom to modify that code and to redistribute modified copies of this code, which is something you cannot do with proprietary software. And these four freedoms have had the power to change the way the software industry is operating. That defines free software, and free software has evolved through dubious ways into what we call commercial open source. Commercial open source is now taking uh, market shares in the software industry to the point that in a, each, any uh, ca product category or segment categories that has, had been defined by proprietary vendors, now there is an open source alternative. The whole market is shifting to open source. But you might say this is more copying. These product categories that have been defined by proprietary vendors are now emulated and reproduced and developed under new rules by software, uh, open source software vendors. That was until, let's say, 2010. But something happened in 2010. And we realized that with cloud computing appearing and all proprietary vendors taken by surprise, open source is now racing with proprietary vendors. We are innovating, and that's why we've chosen this theme today, open source, the innovation drive. Open source is to innovation what low interest rates are is to economic recovery. We help fluidify, we help accelerate innovation. And today, what we do in cloud computing is um, state of the art and it is at par with what property vendors are doing. So that's what we do here. Our mission in, the middle, in this context is to be a community, a global community working together to develop a code base of open source software and to, because we understand that it's all about business, to develop a business ecosystem. Our members join us for the technology but also for their own interests, we understand that. We've managed with OW2 to create a global organization. The open source market is defined by its research uh, teams, its development teams, but also by its third party organizations. If I organize the organizations uh, in six categories, we first have at the bottom uh, the organizations that define the standards. There's no open source without open standards. Then we have the organizations that help promote open source, build the awareness. These organizations create, a change the mind of people and they help people understand what's at stake. Then we have the organizations developing the legal framework on, upon which open source is developing. Open source is not a, uh, uh, a vendor buyer based on the vendor buyer relationship. It's more based on cooperation rules. And this legal framework defines the rules by which we operate. Then we get into the technology. We have the grassroots communities, those sharing their in an interest for a state-of-the-art or breakthrough technologies, more or less organized. Then we have the organizations going up that concentrate on product lines. They're very efficient. They develop. Um, a narrow set of uh, technologies, but when you look at them, you realize that they are controlled by a private company. And those organizations that are controlled by private companies 
have to follow the stakes of the private companies. And when you think of, uh, of very, cool, very recent example, the Symbian community disappeared when the company that was controlling it decided to repropriatize this operating system. And then you have the independent organizations, those that concentrate on developing a business ecosystem. There are four of them in the world. We may be a distant four, we're very modest, we do our job well, but we know that we're in good company with the Linux Foundation, the Eclipse Foundation, and the Apache Foundation. We are, in this context, the infrastructure, the open source infrastructure community. That's what we concentrate on, that's what we do. Now, what, who, who and what we are, how we're organized, so let's have a look at OW2. Many of you, you know that, uh, do you know that picture? This is OW2 in one picture. We start with the code base. At the center, we have the code base. We do not exist without the code base. That code base is developed by a community. That community works in the framework of activities. Everything runs smoothly because of our open source governance and we keep our independence because our members pay their fees. So what do we do? Our code base. We have today, one, we count 116 projects on the, on, the, on the code base. About one third mature, one third in incubation, one third in, in archives. The mature projects are those that lead the W2 today but those in incubation are those that represent tomorrow, tomorrow's uh, LW2. In 2000 and, uh, well, since last uh, open so, um, LW2 conference, we accepted nine new projects. 